Hey guys, I'm Michael here with another Renderman announcement. Renderman 21 is out. Look, it's got a brand new shelf and it's really cool and nicely colored. Um, I just thought I'd take you all through a really quick overview. Uh, sort of think of it as a quick start. If you um, haven't used Renderman before, you're really lucky because 21 is a great place to start, it seems. Um, but if you have used it before, uh, just look at this as like a quick preview to all the lovely things that you'll be able to do. So I've got a Maya scene here. I'm just going to add in a polygon sphere because that's everyone's favorite shape. And I'm also going to drop in a uh, plane. Did that drop in? Why don't we open the outliner? Yes, it did. All right. Um, and then I'm going to scale that up and move it down. Cool. All right. Um, so when you um, have got render man enabled which you can do by going to windows settings preferences plugin manager and scrolling down to get to render man um, and you may want to um, have open vdb open uh, loaded as well unless you are using a conflicting renderer uh, like redshift may conflict with that i think um, but that will do for now so we've got ourselves a plane and a sphere if we want to add a pixar disney shader to it let's select the sphere um, and if you go up to the render man shelf uh, you can right click on this uh, ball which may be familiar from toy story um, and you've got three options you've got pixar surface you've got layer surface and you've got martian here i'll probably cover all these in a specific tutorial but i'm just going to go through the basics for now so uh, let's just click pixar surface and you'll see that it slightly changes the color of that um, we can also drop in a light uh, that's this button here if you right click on it we can create a rectangle light or a disc light or a distant or a sphere or an aov light once again probably get into those at a later stage uh, on a separate tutorial but let's just create a rectangle for now and move it up and point it at the ball um, and you can tell the direction the light is coming out by the arrow on that and I might just make that a little bit bigger uh, and in our attribute editor I will increase the intensity to 2 um, and then um, I'm just going to put the gate on and if we click this button here it's IPR which will bring up the um, it uh, previewer and it's basically render man's uh, preview window for interactive renderers uh, renders so with this open I'm just move this off screen slightly if I turn the camera view around um, it updates it live so you can see it changing um, and that's all fine and well and good if we want to stop that um, we can click that button there and it will stop it so let's minimize that uh, if we go into the hypershade editor you'll see that uh, this pixar surface that we applied to the sphere has already been created can do some real basic adjustments let's make it um, a lovely blue color um, and then you've got all your further options down below I think I'm gonna actually have to do a separate tutorial just for the shader because uh, there's quite a lot to it but um, your basics are if you want to add specularity to it um, you can use this alpha slider um, and uh, also you can adjust the roughness um, I'll probably add a little bit of roughness on the color and then if you IPR that again you'll see that it's made a bit of a difference um, so yeah it's this shade is actually really nice and it seems really quick to render as well um, I actually think RenderMan 21 might be a bit snappier than 20 uh, which is nice um, so yes that render is complete so I can click stop um, what else can we do well we've got a basic shader on there right now I want to show you a new thing that they've added in uh, with 21 which is the uh, preset browser uh, which is this little uh, circly button here uh, basically you can apply material to your um, to your objects using any preset um, and you can actually drop in um, uh, lights and things as well so I might delete that light and show you some of the lights uh, so why don't we start with the lights um, you've got if I just nudge this over you got a couple you got a 90 degree light just means it's coming from one side you got the Rembrandt light which is meant to emulate a Rembrandt style painting and you got three point light um, which I'm going to use so if I right click on that and import and assign to selected you'll see it brings in three new lights in the scene because it's a three point light setup um, and actually they're I think I don't know if they're coming in um, based on the grid size but why don't we just scale this up so we can get a bit of view and then um, we can click IPR and have a look so you get a nice little three-point light setup um, 
And annoyingly, I did a three-point light setup tutorial recently, uh, which this pretty much makes redundant because you can just quickly set one up very easily. But um, at least you'll understand the theory of a three-point light setup if you watch that tutorial. Um, so yeah, let's stop that and let's move this guy so he's sort of sitting a bit better. All right, so I'm going to keep that three-point light set up on, but what else can we do uh, with the preset browser? Well, we can assign a material to our object. Uh, so let's something start with something uh, quite obvious, like um, well, this brushed aluminium. So if I right-click on that, import and assign to selected. So that's going to assign it to the um, sphere that I've got there. And you'll see in the hyper shade editor, it's created a new... Um, a new shader as well. And if we just click IPR again, you'll see that you've got this metally golf ball-y looking thing. But um, it's actually a pretty tasty looking shader. I've got to say, um, just for a preset, um, they've done a pretty good job of giving you something that's good to work with. I'll show you a couple more really quick. So let's grab, let's grab this oak wood one. I've not looked at this one yet. Did I do that? Um, up here. So it's got a sort of um, progressive a procedural texture applied to it, which is pretty cool. Um, would probably be very handy for some uh, indoor scenes that you might be creating. And let's try this uh, carbon fiber one to round it all off. So that's pretty cool as well. Um, move the camera a little bit. There are a few uh, other things that have changed between 20 and 21. Um, one of them I'd like to point out if I just grab all these lights and delete them. Um, if I create a um, Pixar dome light, which is that sort of light that you might be already familiar with, and I go to the attribute editor for it, um, it's all pretty straightforward. Let's just give it a color for the sake of argument. Um, let's give it a red color-ish, um, and then IPR again. The thing you'll notice is that it doesn't show the, uh, by default, it doesn't show the, the light in the background like it normally would. It would normally be a big blown out white, or pink in this case, um, background. You need to uh, go to visibility here on the attribute editor and make sure camera visibility is enabled. It's disabled by default. Uh, so if we IPR that again, you'll actually be able to see the background there. So uh, that's important to keep in mind as well if you're switching over. Uh, and the same thing applies if you're creating an environment daylight. Um, which is once again right click Pixar environment day um, and we can just change the sky tint to be sort of a bluey color and the sun tint to be whatever and then just IPR. Um, you'll see that the background is not visible until you have that selected so let's quickly IPR that again. There you go. Um, and that shader seems to be, obviously these shaders have been updated quite a lot if you're looking at the attribute editor and I've yet to really uh, charge in through them because uh, I've been working on a, a lot of other things at the moment. Um, but um, I'll be sure to go back and revisit uh, some of these shaders and uh, materials in separate tutorials. So uh, stay subscribed because, <laughs> uh, yeah, you can look forward to all of that fun stuff. And I'll be going through all the stuff that's on the um, Renderman shelf uh, blockers. I haven't yet tried the blockers to see how they work in the new version. Hopefully they're a little bit less finicky than they were in um, 20. Uh, one last thing I'd like to point out before I just top this one off um, is that if you were using Renderman Reyes uh, previously, they've discontinued it um, going forward. It will still have legacy support until 2018 or 19, I think they said. So you, if you've got some projects on the go, you're going to be okay. Uh, but consider moving all your projects over to RIS. Um, otherwise, you could be in a spot of bother. Um, but yeah, until next time, that's pretty much all I've got to say. So um, if you have got anything uh, in RenderMan, 21 that you want me to cover first um, leave a comment uh, below um, and if you have liked this very very brief overview of the wonderful renderman 21 uh, click like so other people can find it and be aware that renderman 21 is out um, and if you um, haven't already subscribed because i've got new renderman tutorials coming out basically every week unless i'm doing a tutorial from some other computer graphic design type thing. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching everybody and I will catch you very soon.